It's one of my favourite things to fish these flats. There we go. They tend to gather bait fish and where there's bait fish. No! <laughs> Into the net. All right, so a little bit of a late start to the day, but that's okay. I was um, waiting for the tide to start to fall. So the plan for today is to fish some uh, shallower flats. Through the winter months, the barra have been up on those flats to warm and to hunt. Now that spring's here and the water's warming up, they're really, you know, if they're hanging up there through a good part of the tide, they're really only up there to hunt. We're gonna fish the outgoing and the first of the incoming and see how we go. I have been fishing for surface for quite some time. I'm gonna change it up today. I'm not sure whether I'll stick with it or not, but this is my um, Holt swim prawn. Uh, nice bright Larry color. The water's not too dirty. It's murky, but not too dirty um, with um, my favorite stinger rig on it. So uh, one quarter jig head, uh, 4.0 I think from memory. Uh, might be a 50, but I think a 4.0 uh, TT chin lock. Ah, sorry, um, headlock. And we'll see if we can find a barra. Well, that was a bump. Good start. Even though I'm fishing the flats, I am looking out for bits of structure. As the water drains and the bait moves out, the barra will try and stay up there for as long as possible to hunt that bait. And they have to stay on the fringes. And one of their uh, strategies for that is hanging around some of this fallen timber for as long as they can before they have to move out into some deeper water. A lot of rat barra up on these flats, but you do get the odd really good one. Um, I've got a few in the 90s up in water that was you know, not too much deeper than, than their body. And I've actually, um, I've seen a few cruising that I haven't been able to convince in water that, uh, uh, that was so shallow that they had to remain on their sides, they couldn't swim upright it was so shallow so I know the big fish up here and I'm really hoping we might be able to get one today. What often you can't see through these flats and, and why it's worth coming back and really low dead low tides just to check out the flats themselves is that there's there's often little channels and gutters running through these flats and the um, predatory fish like barramundi in particular will use these channels as pathways and also as um, uh, ambush points uh, when when bait are forced back into these channels to move out to deeper water. Oh, what's, there we go. What have we got? <laughs> well, it ain't a barra, and I I can't say it's a wanted catch. But um, <laughs> I haven't caught one in a lure for some time. The dreaded catfish. Now I understand in the US that catfish are quite popular, but we have different species of catfish and over here they're, um, they're considered vermin. Uh, so <laughs> uh, ours also have some um, spikes with um, mild venom. They're not too bad. They sting like buggery for a while, particularly the smaller, the smaller ones. Um, look, they're, they're good fun, but um, yeah, as I said, not really worth a lot. <laughs> All right, so there he is. And I'm going to make you up at it, these peck fins and the dorsal fin. They've got a spine on there and a little bit like a stingray. Uh, not quite as venomous from what I understand. I don't really want to find out. But um, yeah, they, these guys grow much, much bigger, well over a metre. Uh, this guy's only, only a little one, but we'll let him go, catch up with his mates. All right, let's see if we can find that barra. Might need a little bit more gravy. One of the things I like to do is to put it on the legs and the back half of the body. I don't like to go to the front half because quite often the, um, the line will rub across that and you'll get this smear of um, the scent, the attractant across the line and it thickens the line and actually makes it more visible so uh, I like just to do the back half if I can back half or two-thirds of 
of my soft plastics and even the hard bodies. All right, I really like these isolated snags. They tend to gather bait fish and where there's bait fish that uh, are sort of hanging around one spot for any length of time. Generally the predators will hang around that too and pick them off. Oh. No! <laughs> Straight for that snag. Thankfully, he's come out. Oh, I might be a blue salmon maybe. I'm not sure, or another catfish, one or the other. <laughs> I don't know, it's a blue salmon. I thought with the speed it was going at, that might have been a salmon. These guys love hunting the flats. Put on a really good show. I've got a couple of these that are a little bit bigger than this guy. This guy, well, he might go just size, but not all that big. And they got a bigger cousin, the king, king threadfin, which grow much, much bigger. So I want to get this guy in and put a tag in him. He's one of the species that we tag. There he is. Blue salmon, we'll get a tag in him quickly. They are a little bit prone to um, to sort of, you know, not liking being out of the water too long, so we'll, we'll be quick with this guy. And I don't like using the lip grips on these guys too much because they do have a little bit of a soft mouth and they can get a little bit torn up, but we'll let this guy go. He's a little bit groggy. Nah, he's fine. All right, let's release that salmon. This line's a little bit frayed up. They're not as bad as Barra, but they do have mouths that, yeah, look. You know, nine times out of ten, you know, most people wouldn't change that, but I'm going to change that because knowing my luck, the next fish will be a 80 plus Barra and um, I'll get busted off. It's one of my favourite things to fish these flats through the springtime. Water starting to warm up, but you know, not too hot. Uh, sometimes those summer months can get up and past the mid 30 degree temperatures, and it's just too much for a lot of fish. They're warm for most of the day, unlike winter, which oh, missed it. That's what I was saying. They're warm for most of the day, unlike winter, when they're, they're sort of only really warm if there's a, an afternoon low, very time specific and only if the sun's been out for the day. Oh, there we go. What do we got? I think it might have been a jack, maybe? I'm not sure. Oh no, it's a bear. I just saw a bit of colour. I thought it might have been. It just hasn't played up yet. <laughs> He's trying to hide under the boat. Oh, they go under there. The electric's there. Let's see if we can get this net under him. There we go. A bit tricky on your own, but <laughs> it's doable. First barrier of the day. Pretty sure I've got a couple of bumps from one earlier on. But uh, definitely the first confirmation, which is good. There he is, beautiful Hinchy Barra, ready to go, just on size, uh, just a, a millimetre oversize, so that's um, just over 58 centimetres and ready to be released. Fins up, away he goes, uh, might be too shallow there now, There's also no bait around here, so this will be the last cast before I move on. No. Whew, got lucky. I think that's a sign. A sign to move on. Bit of a pressure point and some skinny, dirty water up there on the edge. So I hope there might be a barra there somewhere. Oh, bugger. Something had a go. Oh, had a go again. I think there might be a barra actually sitting there right up in the shallows and reacting a bit late. Getting towards the bottom of the tide. They might be waiting for the incoming now. He might have already had a feed. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
he just moved down a bit. <laughs> All right, another bucket mouth, a rat bucket mouth, into the net. This one won't go size, but they're all fun. Another beautiful Hinchy Barrett. This guy is about an inch under size. Still nice and chunky. Quite healthy. Ooh. And obviously ready to go, so we're getting back in. Give me a bit of pink bling. Probably hear that it's a little bit blowy today. And um, while well, that causes problems well, when you want to head offshore, or fish open water, quite often these flats, it creates an opportunity. That breeze pushes the water up against that bank, stirring up that mud and creates that dirty water line uh, right through right through the hole of the tide. Quite often what happens without that breeze is that if you've got a fair tide, there might be a little bit of dirty water and then either side of that low, um, the water sort of clears up a little bit. But with this breeze, it keeps it there, keeps that dirty water apron there and it keeps the fish there for longer and don't be afraid of a little bit of um a little bit of breeze so long as you can stay in your boat and you don't get you don't get bumped around too much it's not too annoying then then it's worth persevering Ooh, something busting up bait down further Ooh. oh i missed him come a second time two shots at that last fish and Oh, there's one just right in front of me. It just rolled on some bait. The camera might not have caught it, but my eyes did. Oh. Apology for the language, but that was a really nice barrow, that one. Uh, I've been stalking along here trying to find a half decent one, and that one was uh, well over legal. 